In the previous example, we have sh I've shown you how to convert uh, the position vector of a point from Cartesian to spherical, and how to convert a function from Cartesian to spherical. The, one of the important things we have to learn how to do in this course is how to convert vectors. And because vectors have three components and every component is the direction of a unit vector, we have to transform the unit vectors as well from one coordinate to another. So here in this figure to the left, I'm try, I will show you how to do a transformation from spherical coordinate systems to Cartesian coordinate systems. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing here what we call the Rho Z plane. So uh, if this is a point B here, this is a point B shown here, this is P. Okay? This is its position vector. And uh, this is the plane containing the position vector and the Z axis. So the, the, this is the coordinate here is simply equal to Rho. This is Rho. This is pointing in the Rho direction, and you can see a Rho as well. We agreed that the angle theta is the angle that the position vector makes with the z-axis. This, so this one here, we call this one theta. So um, if we draw the unit vectors, we have AR. AR is here. We have uh, A theta pointing the normal of increase of theta. Um, and uh, by knowing that this angle is theta, we know that there is another angle theta there. And... Uh, between the AR and the AZ, so this is this one here, this also is called theta. So we can decompose AR into two vectors. AR is equal to cosine theta in the Z direction, so it can be projected actually into two bars. I'll try to project as much as I can. So here it has two parts. Cosine theta in the direction of Z and sine theta in the direction of A rho. And we do the same exactly for A theta. A theta we can very easily we can see that this angle here that the a theta uh, has with a rho is equal to uh, theta as well. So we can say that a theta has two components. The first one, the direction of a rho, which is equal to cosine theta a rho. The second one will be the, uh, an, uh, a unit vector pointing downward this way, okay? And this is it pointing in the minus z direction. So this is sine theta a z. So by doing that, we're able to expand uh, a r and a theta in terms of a rho and a z. But remember, we want to go to Cartesian coordinates, so we have to get rid of a rho as well. We know from our work in cylindrical coordinates that a rho, uh, and if you draw this in the xy plane, a rho is equal to cosine phi a x plus sine phi a y. So we can eliminate a rho in the, in the first set of equations here, equations number one get rid of a rho, replace it by this one, and you end up with these, with these two expressions. So I remove a rho and replace a rho by cosine phi a phi, a cosine phi a x plus sine phi a y. And this will, will give you this, uh, these two expressions for uh, a x here and a theta here in terms of theta and phi. Of course, a phi, we already know its expansion from our work in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, we know that the a phi can be written as minus sine phi a x plus cosine phi a y. So what we did here, we're able to express the unit vectors in the direction of r, theta, and phi. And these are unit vectors that change from one point to another. In terms of the fixed uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate directions a x and a y. So this will allow us to move in the next step and now try to um, uh, obtain uh, expansion in the Cartesian coordinate systems. So if you are given a vector which has, uh, which is written in, in spherical coordinate systems like this one, it has three components, a r in the r direction, a theta in the theta direction, and the a phi in the phi direction. We simply eliminate the unit vectors the direction of r, uh, theta and phi and replace them by the expansion for a r which is the one we got in the previous slide this one the expansion for a theta and the expansion for a phi and then what we do we start to collect the terms multiplying the unit vector in the x direction e x terms multiplying the unit vector in the y direction e y terms multiplying the unit vectors mul uh, multiplying the unit vector in the z direction e z and then when you do so you end up by this expression of course, this form, uh, I, a word of warning, and I mentioned this before in the lecture, AR will be given to you as a function of R, theta, and phi. So to, con to complete your transformation, you have to co convert these components themselves, this one here, this one here, and this one here. These are functions of, X, y, of, of R, theta, and phi. You have to convert them to functions of X, Y, and Z. 
Anyway, this, this transformation here shows you that AX, the component in the X direction, AX and the AY, the component in the Y direction, and the AZ, the component in the Z direction, can be written as linear combinations of the component in the R, theta, and phi directions. And we can put this in a matrix form very similar to what we did in cylindrical coordinates. So if you organize a previous equation we had, uh, and you put the three components, you can see that we can write AX, AY, and AZ in the, forming mat in the following matrix form. So this, we call this one a transformation matrix T. It takes us from, um, from the uh, uh, R, theta, and phi components to the corresponding X, Y, and Z components. And remember, R, theta, uh, the theta and phi in the matrix, they are related to the point at which you do the transformation. They are not related to the vector R itself. They are related to the point at which you are doing this transformation. I mentioned in the classroom that if you that this sort of matrix, if you check it, you will see that the first column, this one here, if you take the dot product between the first column and the second, and the third columns, you'll get zero. If you did the if you take a dot product between the second column, first and third, you get zero. If you take the dot product between the third and the other two will get zero. But each one of them, if you take the dot product bet uh, between it, uh, uh, between itself, with itself, you will see that you'll get a one. And we call this matrix an orthonormal matrix, and luckily its inverse is equal to its transpose. So if we try to multiply both sides by the inverse here, by t minus one, we'll see that the inverse transformation, which here is this t minus one here, this is what takes us from the r, theta, and phi, from the x, y, and z to the r, theta, and phi, is actually, this matrix here is the transpose of the first matrix, which is a very nice property. So we can only write one of them, but if you can use, if you can want to transform the other way around, we can use the, its, its transpose. So now we start substituting. Uh, if you have, if you are given a, r, theta, and phi, you can get the x, y, and z components. If you are given x, y, and z, you can convert them to r, theta, and phi. And don't forget to convert the components themselves. This one here, a, r, a, theta, a, phi, will have also to be converted to x, y, and z. These components here, a, x, a, y, and a, z, will have to be converted to r, theta, and phi to, co to finish this transformation. Now let's see an example of this matrix transformation. I'm giving a vector uh, x plus a y x plus y in the x direction, y minus x in the y direction plus z in the z direction. Uh, we wanted to express this vector in spherical coordinates. So it is a vector. We uh, we have to do two transformations here. We have to transform the unit vectors a x a y and e z from Cartesian to spherical. We have to transform the components and themselves. So we have to transform the components themselves, which is uh, this one here and this one here and this one here, from uh, Cartesian to uh, from the Cartesian to the spherical ones as well. So we use the transformation matrix. So this is a transformation from Cartesian to spherical. This is the transformation matrix we mentioned earlier. It's a little bit bulky to write. Um, so uh, you write this matrix and then you um, you expand. To get the AR, I, this is here, this is uh, AX, this is a component in X direction, this one here is AY, and this one here is AZ. So uh, you do this expansion here, and then you multiply, of course, your transformation, you are not done here, this is the R component, and I will focus on the R component in the beginning, because it's a little bit lengthy to obtain. So I will focus on just doing the first through here, AR, and then I'll go back to theta and phi. Um, I have, of course, to eliminate as well um, uh, x, y. x is equal, if you remember, to r sine theta cosine phi. y is equal to r sine theta sine phi. And z is equal to r cosine theta. So we will substitute for that uh, to get uh, an expression on, uh, which is pure in spherical coordinates. This expression we get after we substitute it for uh, x r sine theta cosine phi, y, r sine theta sine phi, this is y here, minus x, and uh, here this is z, okay, so this is here, just write them, this is x, this is y, this is y, this is x, and this one here is z. Um, luckily, these terms, they look a little bit messy, but if you try to uh, 
to sum them, there is one with a negative sign. It's R sine squared theta sine theta cosine phi. Uh, it will cancel out with this term here. So this term will cancel out. So you end up with R sine squared theta cosine squared phi uh, plus R sine squared theta sine squared phi. So this is what you will remain. And the, the Z term will give you R cosine squared phi. Of course, if you com combine the first two terms, you take sine squared theta out, you get R sine squared theta. Um, um, and um, so uh, I think I, have, I may have a typo here. Uh, this one here is theta, of course. This is not phi, correct? Because the angle, uh, the, the Z has R cosine theta. So, uh, so if you try to do that, this will give you R sine squared theta plus R cosine squared theta as well. And when you combine them, you obtain R. So everything here is in R. It's a little bit messy. If you are not careful, you can make a mistake as I did here. But uh, for, remember, Z is equal to R cosine theta and the transformation had cosine theta. There is no phi in, this, in the Z part. Uh, so AR is equal to R, very simple expression, and now we can move to calculate the A theta from the second rule in this matrix. From A theta as well, if you expand it, if you multiply by transformation matrix, uh, it's X plus Y cosine theta cosine phi, Y minus X cosine theta sine phi minus Z sine theta. And then, of course, you are not done when you do that, you have to transform X and Y as well. X is equal to R sine theta cosine phi here. This is x and this is y, r sine theta, there is theta missing here, cosine phi, sine phi, and so on. Um, you do exactly the same thing we did for the r, for the r component. Now we end up with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. We have to, uh, to start uh, reducing them a little bit. There is one with a negative sign, which is r sine theta cosine phi, and then sine theta sine phi. So both th sines and cosines are there. And this one here will cancel out with, uh, with the first term here. So this one here, R sine theta cosine phi multiplying cosine theta cosine phi. So those two terms will cancel out and two terms will remain. And then we end up with R cosine theta sine theta from the Z part. So if you summarize everything, this is what you end up having. If you, if you put all the terms together, you get R sine theta cosine theta multiplied by cosine squared phi plus r sine theta cosine theta sine squared phi. And these two terms, when you sum them, you will see that you will get r sine theta cosine phi. It will cancel out with the r sine theta sine cosine phi coming from the z part, and you end up with zero. So this vector does not have a theta component. It has, it has only a, an r component and a phi component. The final transformation probably is the simplest. It's for a phi. A5 from the matrix is going to be equal to uh, the X component. This is uh, the AX multiplied by minus sine phi. And then you have AY multiplied by cosine phi. And you, of course, you expand uh, AX into R sine theta cosine phi as we did earlier. This is phi here. It should be clear. And this uh, you expand Y R sine theta sine phi. And then you multiply uh, terms and so on. Um, and you put on this, you put all this together. You will see again that two terms will cancel each other out, and you'll end up only with two terms left. So the two terms left are minus r sine theta sine squared phi, and minus r sine theta cosine squared phi. If you take, of course, minus r sine theta out, the sine squared plus the cosine squared will give you one, and the a phi is equal to minus r sine theta. So now we know that this vector when it's converted to spherical coordinates uh, at any point r, theta, and phi in space. This will give us r, a, r. It has a very strong component in the r direction, and it will give us uh, r, sine, theta in the phi direction. So it does not have a theta component, actually. This vector does not have a theta component. It's only r and phi.